Here's my bike by the way. I'm literally just driving around here in these random areas. We went from industrial terrain to a somewhat wooded area. And I saw the sign and I just stopped because I had to film this. Guys, you know what the awesome thing is about uh, making videos outdoors? Is that you never know what you're gonna find or expect. Most of this stuff is completely unplanned, but I found something really interesting. Eiken processi rups. That means oak processionary caterpillar. Literally, word for word. Eiken processi rups. Oak processionary caterpillar. And this is a warning sign because this is one of the most dangerous caterpillars of my country. They are one of the major uh, Lepidopteran pests. And the caterpillars can be pretty noxious. Their hairs can um, create strong allergic reactions on your skin, such as itching. But also in your lungs, if you breathe the hairs, they can be harmful. And in my country, they've become uh, somewhat of a plague over time. So let's wait for the cars to pass. So here's what's really funny. They put up warning signs against oak processionary caterpillars. And look what's behind the sign. Da! Here they are. Tomato poea processionia. So this is official. A nest of oak processionaries. Do not touch. Wow. So this is one of the most uh, quote-unquote dangerous caterpillars of my country. It's funny, here's another warning sign. And the caterpillars seem to like these signs a lot. Because each time there is a sign, there's a freaking nest behind it. <laughs> Good job, government, for giving these uh, animals Nice place to make a nest. Wow, it looks like many of them are pupating or shedding their skins. They do it together and here on the stem of this tree is a massive nest. You can see it? Wow, that's a big nest of the oak processionary. Do not touch people, I'm, I swear this is not a friendly species. So why is this species so vilified? Why do people hate them? Why are there warning signs? How dangerous are these caterpillars? Okay, I'm going to be honest. On my YouTube channel, I've raised some of the most uh, venomous caterpillars in the world. I've been stung by some pretty bad species in my lifetime. If you don't believe me, just go to my channels. There's literally videos of me doing that. I've been stung by these guys as well in the past. And um, so in terms of uh, long-term health effects, they're not very dangerous. Because, uh, I mean, in South America there's caterpillars and if you touch them, you're, you literally are at risk of dying. Like, they can be lethal. The oak processionary caterpillar, as far as I know, has a, is uh, not a species that is easily lethal or is going to give you long-term health effects. However, uh, let's wait for the car to pass. However, the, the fact that something is not immediately deadly doesn't mean it's not dangerous. For example, beating somebody up. Imagine I use my fist and I beat you up. Uh, you may not die, but that doesn't mean it's good for your health. It's similar with this species. The hairs of these caterpillars the problem is the hairs, they disperse, they float through the air. If there's a strong wind, they can blow the hairs away for, for many meters. So even me here sitting next to the nest can be dangerous. If there's strong wind, I can breathe in the hairs. These caterpillars can give very strong allergic reactions. They can give you an anaphylactic shock. Uh, that means if you are allergic, uh, you will have to visit the hospital because your health will be at risk. Does that mean you're going to die? Well, that's a bit extreme, but if left untreated, who knows what could happen? The effects can be pretty bad. 
Second of all, there is the sensation of being stung by them. What does it feel like to be stung if you touch these caterpillars? Well, I've experienced it in the past, and let me tell you, it was one of the worst experiences I ever had. So, um, what's interesting is uh, if these caterpillars affect you, it's, it's, it's not really like pain, but it's like an, an intense, intense itching sensation. And let me ask you guys, have you ever been... Uh, have your body, has your body ever itched so much that it physically hurts? That's what it feels like. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And I'm not going to lie. This is one of the worst uh, caterpillar species that I've been affected by personally. So I'm not going to touch them. I'm actually a little bit scared of them because I know what it feels like. You know, some caterpillars, they give you like a burning, uh, painful sensation. But this uh, sensation is such a strong itching is almost like it's like torture to be honest i mean you can take a hot shower over and over and the feeling doesn't go away if it's really intense intense then you will fail to sleep at night because you're itching all over it's absolutely terrible So, if I had to give this species a rating of how dangerous it is, how, how deadly it is, I would give it a 3 out of 10. It's not really a, a deadly species or anything. However, if I have to give it a rating of how bad it feels, the discomfort that they give you, I give it a 9 out of 10. I've been stung by many caterpillars in my life and this is like in the top 5. They're absolutely horrible and very, very annoying. Like, I wasn't able to sleep for a full night because the itching didn't stop. It's, it's terrible. It's a 9 out of 10 uh, how bad it feels to be stung by these guys. Really. So if you ever see these guys in the wild, please don't touch them. The, another thing is the hairs, they're able to disperse by the wind. A lot of caterpillars are only dangerous if you immediately touch them with your hand. But for this species it's different. Just being near them like I am right now is already dangerous. The hairs, even right now there's a small chance that I too can be affected. If the hair is blowing in my face and I breathe it will be bad for my lungs, for my skin. Being around them is dangerous. So you don't even have to touch them to be affected by it. That's the, that's the, that's the dangerous thing. So why are these creatures such a massive uh, pest in my country right now? It's going out of control. Well, actually that's the fault of humans, believe it or not. It's not the caterpillar's fault. The mistake is a mistake made by humans and the way that we manage our landscape. You see, here's the problem. The oak processionary caterpillar, it can only complete its life cycle on oak tree. As far as I know, oak tree, Quercus, is the only plant that the caterpillars can eat. So what did our government decide to do? They, tr they decide to create a mono monoculture of oak trees. In my country, especially like 20, 30 decades ago, the government went on a rampage planting oak trees everywhere. Why? Well, I guess it was like a form of landscaping, a form of decoration. Let's be honest, oak trees are beautiful trees. They get very tall, very old. I love oak trees. But when you plant nothing and nothing but oak trees, of course the species that benefit from these plants are going to propagate themselves massively, right? If you fill a warehouse full of cheese, you're gonna get mice. I know mice don't really eat cheese that much, but it's a metaphor, right? We make it exceptionally easy for these animals to become a pest. See, when you go into a forest, in the wild, in nature, you don't only see oak trees everywhere, you see a diversity of trees. 
you see lime trees, you see pine trees, you see willows, you see spruces, you see cherry trees. You see every kind of tree that there is mixed together. You see ash trees, you see maple trees. Instead, we created like these parks, forests, suburbs, only filled with oak tree, oak tree, oak tree, oak tree. Of course, it's a monoculture. Of course, these pieces are going to take advantage. Of course, it's our fault. It's not the caterpillar's fault. Second of all, we wiped out the predators of these species. You know how many birds and animals are able to eat these caterpillars? A lot of them. Wasps, birds, flies, many species prey on them. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know many caterpillars of the processionary caterpillar, of the oak processionary caterpillar, die before making it to adulthood? Why? That's because there's an insane amount of parasites that can parasitize them. I'm pretty sure everybody on this channel who has a healthy interest in moth and butterflies knows about the parasites that can affect caterpillars. There are several species of, uh, of flies, there are several species of wasps that can lay the eggs inside caterpillars and it will parasitize them, slowly eating them from the inside out. However, the problem is flies and wasps, they need more than only caterpillars to uh, complete the life cycle. For example, flies and wasps, they have to drink nectar, for example, from flowers. So you don't only need the species they parasitize, you also need the landscape to support these parasites. Believe it or not, parasites can be super beneficial. Humans don't like parasites, we think they are gross, we think they are filthy, we are scared of parasites. But parasites do a wonderful job controlling populations of harmful species like this. So if you don't give wasps and flies a place to live, then the pests can grow out of control. Look guys, see this fly? Immediately I can give you a beautiful example of what I just said. This fly species here is actually a parasite. A parasite of the oak processionary caterpillars. And what this fly is doing right now is laying its eggs on the caterpillars and in the nest of the caterpillars. And the maggots of the fly will actually start growing inside the caterpillars and consume them from the inside out. It's almost like those xenomorphs in Alien vs Predator. Oops. Wow. You know that moment where the aliens burst out of the human's chest? Yeah, it's kind of gross, but it's what's going to happen to these caterpillars. Each time this fly lays an egg, it has parasitized the caterpillar and that caterpillar is not going to survive. And this is a beautiful example of nature controlling nature. And the parasites and predators of these caterpillars, like these flies, have been systematically wiped out by humans, because they are more vulnerable than the caterpillars themselves. Guys, do you know what I love when I'm in nature and I talk about something and immediately I'm able to show an example of the thing I just said? I was literally just talking about parasites and... Like, like clockwork, I encounter some of them. See, there are so many flies that are attracted to these nests. And this fly, I don't know how many eggs this fly can lay, but I bet there's... Most flies can lay at least like a uh, hundred eggs. So this, this fly may be able to take down many caterpillars from this nest. See, and it's... Uh, not many people appreciate this, because flies are gross and parasites are gross. But this is nature doing its job, people. This is what we need. So guys, I just named two very important reasons why this species has become a pest. One, we plant oak trees everywhere, monoculture. Two, we wiped out their predators and their natural enemies, the species that prey on the caterpillar, are species that humans have more or less made vanish from the landscape. So they, it's for free for all for these uh, caterpillars. 
But there's also a third reason. And reason number three is going to make people a little bit uncomfortable. Because every time I bring it up, there's going to be a discussion erupting, but it's climate change. Yeah, I really don't care if you believe in climate change. It's pretty much a fact. I mean, every scientist uh, agrees. And if you're not a scientist, I don't think I care about your opinion, because I don't think you are qualified to understand the subject. Now, this may sound like I'm a very arrogant asshole right now. You're not a scientist, so your opinion is invalid. But, you know, sometimes you have to hold your foot down, because we live in a day and age where every nutnik and pleb is able to give their if able to influence the public opinion with their disgustingly misinformed opinions. And sometimes we have to take a step back and recognize it's better to listen to the experts than ourselves. The truth is that the climate is changing. Especially Europe is getting warmer and drier. Warmer and drier. What is this piece is like? This piece is like it warm and dry. Yeah. So, uh, everything getting warmer and drier is bad news if you're a polar bear, but it's good news if you are an oak processionary caterpillar. For the past, like, uh, well, more or less almost every year in my country we are breaking heat records. It's scary. I'm only a 28-year-old man, and already I've been through so many historical heat records in my short lifetime. It's insanity. And these guys are loving it. So I think the problem with monoculture and the problem of supporting their natural enemies is a very easy problem to tackle. It's easily solved with better and uh, more biodiversity in the landscaping. But the third reason climate change is a really, really complex one and more or less requires the um, cooperation of the whole humanity as a species. Something that we are incapable of in many occasions. I mean, just look at the coronavirus pandemic. There's a pandemic of a virus that's killing people. And some people are too selfish to put a, f a fucking piece of cloth on their mouth to prevent infecting other people. So if, if some people behave like chimpanzees that are selfish in this manner, how can we ever expect to tackle the big, bigger issues in the environment? I'm very pessimistic, but you know what? I'm I'm going to try. Uh, I'm going to die trying to convince people to think otherwise. Even though I'm just a YouTuber with a small amount of subscribers. Hey, just doing what I can in this world. Hopefully, you have been informed. Last but least, let's talk about the moths that these guys turn into. I don't have footage of the moths because for some reason. I actually never seen the moths of this insect. The caterpillars are a complete plague, but I never see the moths. I wonder why that is. So let me here show you a picture of it in the screen. Yeah, another car passing by, let's wait. I don't like talking if there's cars driving around, it distracts me a lot from what I'm trying to say. Uh, but the moths, they are pretty cute, they are, I think they are pretty. They're quite hairy and they fly late in the year. So what happens when the moths will hatch is they will lay their eggs on the host plant and the eggs they will hibernate. So the caterpillars of the oak processionary caterpillar are born early in spring after hibernating in winter on the host plant directly. And when the oak plant in spring starts to grow its tiny young little leaves, that's when the caterpillars will be born and start growing again into what we see here. Hmm. Now, personally, guys, I don't think there is anything such as bad species. There's no such thing such as good species. There is no good and bad. There is only diversity of species. There is no such thing as good and bad species, but there is such a thing as good and bad landscapes. Especially the landscapes that we manage. There is such a thing as such as bad landscaping with low biodiversity which allows only a handful of species to propagate over the whole diversity of species. So yeah. See, the thing about nature is that uh, nature requires a high amount of species to have 
many interactions with each other that keep each other in check. It's kind of like these Jenga towers. If you pull out too many pieces, then the tower will collapse and you have a fucking mess. That's what we are doing. We are driving species extinct. We are driving them away from their natural range. We are changing their habitats in ways they fail to survive. Anything from caterpillars to wasps to birds to bats to plants to amphibians to reptiles to just about anything you can imagine. So, and what happens if when we degrade the landscape is we are only going to be left with a small handful of species that, that are going to dominate the landscape. Because the rest has been, all the competition is gone. It's just like a free for all for the few survivors that are left. It's just like how you go into big cities and you see like a million, million pigeons, right? It's very hard for birds to survive in the middle of a big city. Only a handful of species are able to do it. So the ones who, who can are going to propagate like insane amounts. Because they're one of the few that can. Well, there you go. It's us. We are the problem. We are the problem.